Hi everyone, I'm Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. Hey, we are not gonna see this rain materialize across the DMV tonight. You can see it kind of fizzling out here, but what we are tracking now is some cooler air. And of course, that holiday weekend forecast have all the details coming up. You're watching DC News Now at 9. And breaking news tonight, the search ramping up for a final teenager accused of trying to kill a student on a school bus in Prince George's County, Maryland. Police putting out a picture of the suspect and upping the reward in the case. Um, it was really an attempt to intimidate us, um, to scare us. Plus, a critically acclaimed DC restaurant shuttered. Workers say over an effort to unionize. Tonight, they're on the picket line calling out their employer. And could more West Coast flights be coming here to DCA? We'll have the breakdown of the controversial plan coming up. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Thismeen Mafu. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Flanagan. Before we get to your top stories tonight, we have some breaking news out of Montgomery County. A Gaithersburg teenager has been charged arrested with murdering an 18 year old man inside the Wheaton Metro Station. Police say 16 year old Emmanuel Simmons shot and killed Tennyson Vaughn Leslie Jr. on the platform last Thursday after an argument between two groups. Simmons is being charged as an adult. A 14 year old is also charged with accessory after the fact. He'll be charged as a juvenile. And more breaking news this time out of Prince, jo uh, Prince George's where police and U.S. Marshals are searching for the teen accused of trying to kill another teen on a school bus in Oxon Hill. Yeah, so it happened at the beginning of May and our reporter Yamarisa Say is live. Where this incident happened in Yamari, what's the latest at this hour? Yeah, so that teen or that suspect is being identified as 15 year old baby K. Now he's he's accused of boarding a school bus with two other suspects right here on Iverson Drive and Settler Drive. And that's when he boarded that school bus with those two other suspects and began attacking a teenager on that bus. Now, according to police, he is the teenager that's responsible for having that gun in the hand. And he tried to shoot that victim multiple times, but the gun jammed. Now we're going to show you some quick video of the video. Excuse me of the photo that police have released of baby K. Now, as I mentioned, he is no known as 15 year old baby K and police say he was the one carrying the gun during the incident. Now, police have arrested two other teens involved, which is a 14 year old from Suitland and a 15 year old from Temple Hills, and they are both currently being held without bond. Now this week, a 14 year old girl was also arrested and is currently being held without bond as well because she's responsible. The people say that she's responsible for planning that attack. Now, police are still on the hunt for baby K. And if anyone has any information regarding this incident, you are asked to call PGPD or the U.S. Marshal, and they are offering a reward of more than $12,000. For now, reporting in Oxon Hill, Maryland, I'm Yamari Sase, DC News Now. Yeah, Murray, thank you. Meanwhile, all new tonight, dozens of hospitality workers took to the picket line. They're accusing the Intercontinental Hotel at the wharf of union busting. It all comes as a hotel announced a closing of Moon Rabbit. That is the critically acclaimed Vietnamese restaurant that's housed there. Our Mario Carbone live tonight at the wharf. And Mario, workers you spoke with believe this is a direct result of their efforts to unionize. Yeah, they do. And ironically, Chris, the workers that were trying to unionize were doing that as a way to get some stability here at their jobs. But now they say their livelihood is on the line and they're saying that this closure, which was sudden and swift, was a way to punish employees. Outside the Moon Rabbit restaurant, we are the union. workers are still reeling from Monday's news. I was confused. I was angry. Michael Cruz works at the Intercontinental Hotel at the Wharf, which announced this week it's closing Moon Rabbit, where he's been a server for the last two years. Well, Moon Rabbit restaurant is the largest department in the hotel. Um, it was really an attempt to intimidate us, um, to scare us. The closure comes just three weeks after Unite Here Local 25, a hospitality workers union, filed a petition for a union election for food and beverage workers here at the hotel. It's not a coincidence, and the hotel has done nothing but, uh, you know, fight them. Paul Schwab is secretary treasurer for Local 25. The workers have uh, always been concerned that um, the boss is playing around with their chips. There's no transparency. DC is a union town. 
workers are angry, the workers are dedicated. Karen Cole, a spokesperson with IHG Hotels and Resorts, says the decision to close Moon Rabbit was in no way impacted by the union's ongoing efforts to unionize the hotel. And in a statement, Moon Rabbit chef Kevin Tien said, I ultimately wanted to offer Moon Rabbit as a standalone concept and look forward to continuing to share Moon Rabbit with diners. We liked working here. We love the work. We want this to be a career job. Now, it's unclear if the employees are still or still have jobs here, if they are still employees or not, because uh, even if they worked in the restaurant, they still are employees of the hotel. Uh, Cruz says as far as he's concerned, he is still employed. He just doesn't have any upcoming shifts. Reporting live from the wharf tonight, I'm Ariel Carbone, DC News Now. Update tonight, the man accused of flying to DC, renting a U-Haul truck, then smashing it into a security barrier on purpose near the White House, appeared in court for the first time today. 19-year-old Cy Candela will be in jail until his detention hearing next week. Candela is now facing federal charges of discretion of government property on top of his previous charges, which include intent to harm the president. If convicted, he faces a maximum of 10 years in prison and up to $250,000 in fines. And today marked the first day on the job for D.C.'s new interim police chief, Ashan Benedict, takes over with Chief Robert Conti, who officially retires on June 3rd. So Benedict has been with D.C. Police since 2021, running day-to-day -day operations as Executive Assistant Chief of Police. And though he is not eyeing to be chief permanently. Uh, I think it's important to bring some stability and consistency to department operations and not uh, have my ha have that distraction at all. So my, my focus is on the city and, and quelling the violence in the city. So current Chief Robert Conti does not technically leave until the end of the month. But he is helping Benedict transition into the role right now. All right, let's get a first check on the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. And the run of beautiful weather continues. Yeah, we are so lucky. And Janessa, tomorrow looks fabulous too. Yeah, we're going to have another day. We're going to actually finish out this week on the strong side where we're seeing high pressure really taking over our region. I know many people have been discussing with me uh, about this haziness. You can't see all that bright sunshine just due to that wildfire smoke. And it's really due to our warmer temperatures today. It was a, just a very glossy kind of across uh, the region. And that's going to continue tomorrow, but tomorrow will be a little bit cooler. You have more of a wind flow, and so the stagnant air won't be really in place. Uh, 75 degrees at the 9 o'clock hour here in the suburbs of D.C. The farther you go into northern Virginia, Culpeper, Fauquier County, 63. And we're in the middle uh, 70s where we should be dealing with a little bit of rain for Washington County, but it just has not materialized. And I like to say that because this is a dry cold front. It's just not enough energy associated with this uh, system that's going to allow for substantial moisture right now as it uh, hovers across that PA line it's dissipating we'll keep about a 20% of a few showers in the forecast for the next few hours will dry out and then we'll have zero concerns Thursday Friday Saturday as well I do want to put a little bit of emphasis on Sunday at this point 30 to 40% chance of some rain showers we're going to track that in coming up but for the rest of the night let's enjoy partly cloudy conditions guys and so thank you so there's a battle over the skies happening on the ground in the DMV right now yeah some are pleading for more long distance flights to and from DCA but there's plenty of pushback Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Max Marcilla joining us live tonight from Arlington and Max this is a controversial plan that's been debated before It has. It really all revolves around a federal policy that says flights out of DCA over 1,250 miles uh, have some restrictions. Now, there are some people who say that rule is outdated and needs to change, and others who say it's in place for a good reason. A debate is taking off over whether 28 additional long-distance flights should come to DCA. We've had these wars before. Uh, unfortunately, they pop up pretty frequently. Fairfax County Board of Supervisors Chair Jeff McKay says it should be a clear no. Your convenience does not trample 
uh, the quality of life of people who live around these airports. His concerns are shared by Virginia and Maryland's four senators, though not all flyers agree. You live in a highly congested area, it's going to come with a lot of noise. That kind of comes as part of the price. While people like Jordan Cleveno think the new flights would be more convenient than a drive to Dulles, McKay says this change flies in the face of Dulles's purpose, which is those longer distance flights, and can even put safety at risk. If you're jamming more flights in uh, and, and really pushing the capacity of a national airport, then obviously I do think there are some safety issues related to that. Ultimately, they want more choices which result in lower prices. But Brian Walsh with the advocacy group Capital Access Alliance says the current policy is hurting people, including lawmakers who want to come to the district. If you want to fly to San Antonio or San Diego, which are the seventh and eighth largest cities in the country, you're out of luck. There are no direct flights from, from Reagan. Now, McKay says that the efforts that could be taken would be contradictory to what's been going on at Dulles as far as accessibility. Think about the federal government, which invested in that Silver Line extension. Meanwhile, Walsh says he thinks that Dulles will be fine even if this plan were to move forward. And that's because of the growing populations in Prince William County and in Fairfax County. Reporting live outside of DCA, Max Marcella, DC News Now. Max, thanks. Meanwhile, some cargo workers are drawing attention to what they call dangerous working conditions at Dulles Airport. Cargo workers with Swissport, it's a company contracted with United Airlines, is filing a formal OSHA complaint. They say at least one worker was injured by a forklift back in July. The workers say 100 people at the airport are employed by Swissport, and the company has a history of safety problems. <laughs> One day I was working in, uh, and my supervisor was driving the forklift. He tried uh, to pick up a load too fast and so lost control and hit me in the back of my, in, oh my, in the back of my knee. I was lying uh, in so much pain, asking God to help me as I lay there in pain. I'm very worried that accidents like mine could happen to someone else. Well, the workers say they deserve the right to come home safe each and every single night.